Today, we become legends. Alright boys, and we're back with another alignment chart update. So, uh, the most requested one in the comments uh, was magical damage items for the most part. And it makes sense, you know, after doing physical damage, to do magical damage as well. Uh, be sure to subscribe for the other alignment charts coming to the channel, of course. So, we're going to be doing tank items and starter items as well after this one. So, if you don't want to miss those, then definitely hit that big red button. And for those of you that might not have seen my physical damage alignment chart video, maybe you're only interested in the magical items or you just haven't seen it yet, I'll give a quick explanation of how these work, because they are, like, different to your normal kind of item ranking video. So, basically, we have two axes here. Uh, the x-axis, so left to right, is early game to late game. If you place more towards the left-hand side of the chart here, you're a more early game item, going to be picked up in your first few slots. And if you're more towards the right-hand side, uh, you're going to be more of a late game item, you know, probably more expensive, picked up in like your later slots in the build. And then on the y-axis, we have damage and utility, so more towards the top of the chart, you're going to be a much more damage-focused item, and uh, more towards the bottom, you're going to have some more utility, you know, be that healing or extra crowd control, other kind of utility stats, you know, things that just help you out in a way that isn't necessarily just damage. And of course, these axes combine, so if you're in the top left, it's going to be more early game damage focused. If you're in the bottom right, it's going to be more late game utility focused. So yeah, with that explanation done, let's just jump right in with our first item here, which is Bancroft's Talent. So Bancroft's, uh, it is a more early game item. You know, usually if you're going Bancroft's, it's going to be in your first slot. Sometimes you might build it a little bit later, but for the most part, you go in your first slot for some kind of early game sustain, you know, on cards like Anubis, maybe Hades that kind of stuff. So definitely more towards the left hand side for that. And then in terms of damage and utility, it is more damage focused, but it's not all the way up at the top of the chart because it does have some good utility and that lifesteal effect, of course. But this item is basically just power and lifesteal and that's it. Uh, it gives a lot of power, gives a decent amount of lifesteal as well. So not quite towards the top, but uh, definitely more damage focused than utility, although it does have some. Book of Thoth, so it's probably going to be in a similar spot, actually, because it is a very early game item. You know, if you're going Book of Thoth, you're going it first item, basically. Yeah, there's maybe some minor niche applications where you could go it later than that. Maybe if you're going Tablet first, you go Book second or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, built first item, uh, definitely very early game for that reason. And then in terms of damage and utility, it's more damage focused than Bancross, but it does still have some utility and that it basically gives you infinite mana for the rest of the game. This thing gives like a thousand mana, so you're never going to have mana problems once you have this thing stacked up. So there is some utility in that as well, but it is more damage focused than Bancross. I think the lifesteal provides more utility value than the mana overall. And of course, this item gives like, you know, insane amounts of power once you've fully stacked up and if you build around it as well. Uh, Charon's Coin, a very interesting one. I've always disliked this item because it seems designed as an early game item because you have to stack it up. You want to get it as online as early as possible so you can get those stacks, but it also is designed as a late game item because it has percent pen on it. And uh, as you'll know if you watch the uh, physical version of this tier list, um, percent pen, you're generally building more late game. Flat pen, you're generally building more early game because as people get more defense, it's better to shred a percentage of that as it is to just shred a flat amount off of it. And so this item's kind of weird. I guess it'll be somewhere towards the middle. Um, because uh, it has like different aspects where you want to build it early and you also kind of want to build it late as well. Also, it does stack off of god kills and not off of minions, so you would generally build this a bit later than you would build something like Book of Thoth that is a minion stacking item. So I guess we'll put it somewhere in the middle. And then in terms of damage utility, it's probably in the middle as well, I think. It does have some good utility in the movement speed and regen stats that it gives, um, but it's also got some good damage as well. I class penetration basically as damage in this kind of thing. Like, penetration isn't utility to me. Penetration is damage because it essentially just allows you to deal more damage. And so I think it is slightly skewed towards damage, but again, does have some decent utility stats in the movement speed and the regen that it gives you. Chronos Pendant. Uh, for some reason, this is a really low res image, uh, for, for whatever reason. Uh, so this one, kind of interesting as well, because you can build it early and you can build it late as well. Pendant really can fit anywhere in your build, to be honest, uh, if you're going to need that CDR at some point. So I guess we'll put it somewhere towards the middle, maybe slightly more towards the early game. You generally don't build this like last item, uh, but you also don't build it first item by any means. Uh, and then in terms of damage utility, I'll probably skew it slightly more towards utility because obviously it has that 20% cooldown reduction and uh, extra cooldown reduction on the passive as well. Uh, it has some MP5, I believe, as well. And the damage on it isn't great. It's just like 100 power or something, and that's it. Uh, definitely more utility focused. So we'll drop it somewhere around there. Cyclopean Ring, generally built a bit more late game. You know, it's that Kinsai style effect where you're shredding a percent of max health and so it's better when the enemy has more max health online it's also quite expensive uh, in terms of the other rings and uh, it's basically entirely damage focused there's no utility to this it's just uh, big damage and even more big damage on the passive basically so we'll drop it somewhere around there it's not usually something you'll go like super late game um but generally like sort of fourth office slot is when you're going to see cyclopean ring come online maybe slightly earlier than that but generally is better built later in your build because of that percent max health shred that I mentioned. Demonic Grip, again, pretty much right up here in terms of damage because I class pen as damage and all this item is is uh, attack speed, power, and damage. So basically 
just damage on this item pretty much. Uh, in terms of early game and late game, uh, it does have percent pain on it, so it's generally a bit better built a little bit later, but it is quite cheap, has 30% attack speed on it, so it's generally sort of built in the middle of your build, I would say, with Demonic Grip, especially because Hunters and Magical ADCs, of course, um, like to get their percent pen online a little bit earlier so they can start dealing with tanks as like the mid game team fights start to happen. And so yeah, we'll skew it ever so slightly towards the late game, but it is generally kind of a middle to mid to late kind of item that you'll build in your build. And then yeah, it's basically entirely damage. We're probably going to get skewed pretty heavily towards the damage category in this because, you know, these items are built for mages and in rare cases magical ADCs, which are basically just built to deal damage. It's nice to have utility stats on them as well, but they are mostly damage focused. Uh, Divine Ruin, so generally quite an early game item, of course, has flat pen on it. Uh, if you don't need anti-heal, you usually go some other kind of flat pen option, but in most mage builds, you're going to want some flat pen online early in the game to boost your damage up a little bit against those squishier targets, which is generally what you're going to be fighting and aiming for in the early game. You know, you're mostly fighting the mid and jungle for the first few levels in mid. Obviously, the support rotates as well, but generally you shouldn't be focusing the support as the mid laner anyway. So, uh, generally quite an early game item. Um, bit later than Book of Thoth and Bancroft Talon, of course, because you're usually not going divine first item. You can. You can definitely get away with that, and the early flat pen is nice, but generally this is like a second item after like maybe your stacking or your Bancrofts or whatever you want, you want to get this online. And then in terms of damage utility, it's probably somewhere around where Bancroft is, I would say, because it is pretty damage focused. You know, the passive is damage and also the anti-heal, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, it has pen on it, has damage, so quite damage focused. But then, of course, it has that anti-heal passive, which is very good for utility. So we'll probably drop it somewhere around there. Doom Orb. So usually your first item, if you're going to go Doom Orb, I've, I can sometimes see reasons to build it a little bit later, but for the most part, like Doom Orb kind of replaces what you would normally get in terms of like your stacking item. It's just that big power bomb that you get on certain mages that like movement speed a little bit more, like Poseidon, Hebo, Morrigan, uh, very good for Morrigan. So generally quite early game for that reason. And then in terms of damage utility, it is mostly damage focused. Um, it does have some utility stats in the movement speed, which is very nice, and you pretty much just build this on certain picks for that movement speed. So you could argue the utility is quite good, I suppose, or maybe put it somewhere around here-ish. I think that's pretty fair. Ethereal Staff, so sort of more of a bruiser item even than a magical damage item necessarily, but I thought I would put it on here, you know, it's on a magical damage tree and it is still like pretty damage heavy overall, but it does have some pretty good utility stats in that you can steal health and mana from people and has health on it as well, uh, CCR I think as well on this item, which is quite nice. Uh, generally, E Staff is built a bit later into the game, uh, its passive effect is percentage based, so always going to be better late game for that reason, and if you're getting this early game, especially on a mage, you're going to be sacrificing too much damage, so it's generally built a little bit later into your build. Uh, not a super popular item by any means and built more so on guardians than mages, but uh, still, still decent. And then, yeah, in terms of damage utility, I'll probably skew it slightly towards utility. Uh, it does have that CCR, has some health, has some health steal and stuff like that that's uh, pretty nice for utility stats. Uh, Gem of Isolation. Really not built, to be honest, but I feel like if you are gonna build this, it probably will come online a bit later in your build. You know, after you've got some of your big power bombs and your penetration online, you might start going into um, something like this. Probably around the same time you would fit E-Staff in your build, to be honest. And then it's probably a little bit more utility focused than E-Staff, to be honest. Obviously, it has that crowd control on the passive. Uh, comes with, is it CDR or CCR? It's one of the two. I can't remember if they changed it recently, but CDR or CCR, both pretty good utility stats. And then uh, recently got that anti-shield effect as well, which is very good for utility against certain characters. Uh, I think there are better anti-shielding options than Gem of Isolation, to be honest, but I guess if you're against like a Nike or a Yamoja or an Odin, this could, uh, could be useful for that utility-wise, so we'll put it somewhere like there. Uh, Griffin Wing Earrings, I included this in the physical one as well because obviously it can be built cross-class, uh, any kind of ADC can build this item, and it is mostly damage focused for sure, uh, comes with attack speed, power, uh, but that, that effect that allows you to hit basic attacks a little bit more easily, especially at range, does have some utility to it, so we'll drop it somewhere around there. And then in terms of early to late game, it's generally built a bit later. Um, this item, usually you want to get some of your core stats online first, you know, your power, maybe your attack speed, some pen, that kind of stuff. And then you get this item online to allow you to consistently land basics in, in team fights and stuff like that. Hastened Ring, uh, probably in a similar position to most of the rings, but maybe a little bit more utility focused because it does have that passive where you get haste, uh, which is very nice. And also a little bit of movement speed on this as well. I think it's about 7% movement speed or something like that. And then in terms of early late game, I think about where I've got it at actually is pretty right. You know, usually this is, um, on Freya specifically, it's usually built a bit earlier because Freya really needs this effect. But if you're building this on other magical ADCs, 
it's usually like kind of after your core stats that you kind of get this online. Around the same time, you will go Cyclopean a little bit after Demonic Grip, so yeah, probably about there. Last Gasp is an interesting one. New item, of course. Uh, gives you bonus magical power based on gods you heal uh, with the passive. And it does have flat pen on it, so I think this would be more of an early game item. I've not seen it too much. I think it's quite niche. Um, but on like healers uh, for their flat pen option instead of going like for example Spear of Desolation Which you might not want to do because Spear of Desolation is really good right now when they reduce the cost But um, you might want to go this on like certain healers for your flat pen option if you don't need divine And so probably built a little bit more early game for that reason uh, it does come with like a lot of flat power from the passive as well, which is nice uh, and then in terms of um, damage utility, it's basically just damage. I know this is a healer-related item, so you would think it's more utility-based, but really all it gives is power and pen, and more power from the passive, so it is very damage-focused. I think we'll probably drop it around there. Obsidian Shard, so entirely damage-focused. It is just power, pen, and more pen on your first ability, so entirely up here. And then pretty late game as well, of course. It's percent pen, much better late game. You're generally getting this online in like, your fifth or sixth slot as like, your big magical shred to like deal with tanks, so I'll probably be somewhere around there. Polynomicon, uh, mostly damage focused, does have a small amount of utility in that it has some lifesteal, but uh, damage on the passive, big damage as well, um, so probably somewhere around like here or so. And then in terms of early to late game, I feel like Polynomicon is right in the middle. Poly is normally something you get online, you know, you might stack into flat pen into poly or something like that, or like doom orb into flat pen into poly. Uh, normally poly is like in your third or fourth slot, it's not super, I mean you can buy it late game, but usually on the characters that want poly, it's really good for them, and so you want to get it online early, but you don't want to be rushing into this, because the passive scales off of power, so the more power you have, the more useful it is, and you generally want to get some other stats online, like some big power or some pen or something in the early game before you build into poly, but you don't want to get it too late either, because often the gods that do build it is kind of core cool for them, and so you want it online, like around the middle of your build. Pythe piece, pretty interesting item, not really, doesn't really see too much play, but probably underutilized in my opinion. This item provides a lot of stats, um, has an aura, so generally a little bit more useful later on, I suppose, when people start grouping up and stuff like that. Um, quite utility focused. The power on this item is very low, um, and while it does give some extra power from the passive aura, it's still really not that much of a damage focused item. You know, it has cooldown reduction, it provides stats to your teammates, it has lifesteal, so it's quite utility focused, I would say. Probably one of the more utility focused magical items that we have. And then in terms of early late game, I feel like it probably is like somewhere in the, in the middle of your build that you would buy Pyth. It's usually not a rush. Maybe on supports, I suppose you could rush this. For mages, usually not a rush though. You have more important stuff to get online than Pyth. Pythagoras piece and then uh, the later the game goes the less value the passive really gets so yeah pr probably somewhere in the middle I would say. Rejuvenating Heart so another new item this is the one that boosts your healing like based on like your hit abilities and, and basic attacks you get stacks and then you consume those stacks on your next heal to boost it I believe up to like 60% or something like that so pretty utility focused uh, the stats on it are like okay damage wise but uh, obviously you're getting it really for that heal boost on, on your big healers. Uh, so probably a little bit more utility focus, probably somewhere around here. And then in terms of early late game, it's probably kind of a middle of the build, third or fourth slot kind of item. You want to get some more important stats online early before you build this. Um, even on healers, so probably somewhere around there. Oh, I just realized I have Ring of Hecate on here. Uh, that's been removed, so we're not going to be placing Ring of Hecate. Um, Rod of Asclepius. Probably in a very similar spot to Rejuvenating Heart, I think. They both kind of fill the same role in that they just boost your heals. It's just Rejuvenating Heart does it in a little bit of a different way. It's more like concentrated into one big heal, whereas Rod of Asclepius just boosts all your heals by 30% permanently. Uh, so probably in terms of utility, they're about the same. And then to be honest, you, you would build them in a very similar place as well, I think. So we'll probably just put them pretty much on top of each other there. Uh, Rod of Tahuti. Uh, damage, late game. <laughs> this is obviously... Maybe I shouldn't put it right towards the end of late game because there have been metas, and I think even now at the moment in the Pro League that they're, they're building Rod quite early. Uh, even like in the past, it's been rushed as a first item when it just had really good like bloated stats. Uh, especially when stacking is bad, Rod of Hooty has kind of emerged as like an early game rush item to get that big power bomb when you when like Book of Thoth and Warlock staff aren't really optimal. So I guess I won't put it fully towards the late game thing. I, I immediately wanted to slam it to the late game because that's usually where it's built in like your fifth or sixth slot. But there have been metas where you rush it, and so. I won't put it fully towards the right hand side, but then in terms of damage utility, it's, it's all up here. Uh, it's just damage, damage, pen, more damage on the passive. That, that's basically what this item is. It has some MP5, I guess, but uh, that's literally it. And yeah, we'll move Obsidian Shard over a little bit because there's literally no reason to ever build Obsidian Shard early game, whereas there is a bit of a reason to build Rod Zahusi early game, so we'll do something like that. Soul Gem, so a uh, little bit niche, but super good on certain picks, Soul Gem. Um, definitely has some utility to it with the healing on the passive, has a bit of lifesteal as well, has cooldown reduction. Um, 
But, you know, you get some extra damage on the passive. It comes with some power. So it is relatively power based. But to be honest, I would say this thing's quite balanced in terms of power and utility. I'd say it probably lands somewhere in the middle. And then. Actually, in terms of early and late game, it's probably in the middle as well. This is generally like a third or fourth slot build. You know, after you get some core stats online, you'll go into a soul gem on the characters that like it. It can be built a bit more late game as well. But honestly, this might just be a, a middle of the chart placement, a rare uh, directly in the middle item. Uh, this is definitely a middle of the build and very balanced on damage utility. Reaver, um, just just damage and late game, I guess. Uh, let's move up to the Enchada over even more, actually. And then we'll, we'll jam Reaver somewhere like there, I think. Because uh, it's obviously very damage focused. It's basically entirely damage. Um, damage on the passive, big power. Uh, used to have percent pen, but doesn't anymore. Uh, maybe it has some MP5. A lot of mage items just have MP5 tacked on, though. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a utility item by any means. It just has some MP5 because mages lack mana, and so they just tack MP5 onto a lot of different items. And obviously built a bit more late game. Uh, the effect is percent max health damage, so you're going to want enemies to have more health on them. It's a relatively expensive item, and the base stats on it are really bad. It's just like 90 power, I think. And so you want to get some of your base stats, like power and pen, online first before you go into this. Uh, it's not a great rush. Spear of the Magus, so it would have been an early game item before they reworked it into the uh, now giving percent pen instead of flat pen, so it's now built a little bit more uh, later into your build. But of the percent pen items, I would say it's built the earliest. Whether that's because people just still like building it early because they used to have flat pen and they kind of are like, oh, I used to build this in, in second or third slot, so maybe I'll still do that, I'm not sure, but uh, generally a little bit more late game because of that percent pen. Uh, percent damage increase on the passive also a little bit more useful when you're hitting a little bit harder in the late game as well. Um, in terms of damage utility, it's mostly damage, you know, power and pen, but it does have some lifesteal on it. And the effect also applies to them being hit by your teammates as well, which is some utility. I know it's damage, but it's, it's like more towards utility because it's for teammates. Uh, obviously, it boosts your damage as well, but also boosts the damage of teammates. So we'll, we'll drop Spear of the Magus somewhere around there. Spear of Deso, definitely very early game. Uh, you basically build this in the same place you would build Divine Ruin. It's just if you don't need anti-heal, it's like the Brawlers and um, Jotun's debate. Uh, if you don't need anti-heal, you just buy Spear of Desolation. If you do need anti-heal, you buy Divine Ruin. Honestly, I would maybe even put Spear of Desolation ever so slightly to the left of Divine Ruin because sometimes you might even still build Divine later in the build if like you didn't want to get it early, but you still need it. Uh, like that anti-heal is going to be useful throughout the entire game, whereas Spear of Desolation, you're generally building it just for your early game flat pen option. Uh, it's actually a rush right now. I've seen a lot of people rushing this item uh, in, in lieu of stacking. And so maybe we could even put it a little bit further over here. And then in terms of damage utility, it's definitely less utility than Divine Ruin. Maybe we'll move Divine down a little bit because that anti-heal is very useful. And then we'll drop Spear like somewhere around there. Actually, it's probably got a little bit more utility than Doomob. Doomob just has like movement speed, whereas this has like 10% cooldown and also extra cooldown on the passive. So yeah, I think about there is fair for uh, Spear of Desolation. Sphinx Baubles, um... Generally more utility focused, you know, the damage isn't great on this thing. You're mainly building it to be able to bypass that cap of 40% um, cooldown reduction and go to 50%. So pretty utility focused and also very late game as well. Uh, you're going to want to have 40% cooldown reduction already online. I think I talked about this in the physical um, one because obviously this item can be built across physicals and magicals. Uh, you're going to want 40% cooldown already online when you buy this. Otherwise, you're wasting the passive entirely. If you only have 30%, this thing gives 10%. You just add the cap. You're not at 50%. So you, you want to already have like maybe your um, Sansa Time upgrade into Pendulum online and Chronos Pendant or something like that. Or maybe like your Sansa Time upgrade into like Spear of Death or Soul Gem and then you buy this. Uh, it's generally not that useful of an item in my opinion. Um, but if you do want to get it, you should get it late game when you already have 40% pen online. Staff of Muradin. Uh, pretty damage heavy. Has 10% cooldown so I'll put it slightly down. Um, for that reason, a uh, little bit of cooldown to, for utility wise, but extra damage on the passive, percent pen, big power, uh, that's pretty much what it is. And then in terms of early to late game, I feel like staff, it can kind of be built like anywhere in the mid to late game section. You know, anywhere in this right hand side, I could probably place it and it would be kind of fine. Uh, you know, some people go at like third item or fourth item. It's also a bit like uh, Soul Gem and Polly in that the gods that want this item really want this item and it's super good for them. You know, like your Zeus's, your Vulcans, that kind of stuff. And so you, you might get it online a little bit earlier than you normally would based on its stats. Um, but 
yeah, generally still a, a pretty late game item. I think we'll probably drop it around here. Tablet of Destinies. So definitely very early game. Despite being percent of your max mana in damage, you just kind of have to build this early game because of how long it takes to stack. You know, normally this is either a first or second item after your Book of Thoth or something like that. Because uh, it's way too hard to stack if you're getting it in the late game. Um, so generally pretty early game for that reason. And then in terms of damage utility, it's basically just entirely damage. It comes with some mana, which I suppose is nice. And maybe why it's like a, a pixel below the top of the chart here. But it's basically just damage. You know, it's, it's some power and then it's uh, extra damage based on your mana for the passive. Uh, Telkine's Ring, so obviously the, the rush for Magical ADCs, at least before, I'm not sure how it's doing after the nurse, I'm not sure if Magical ADC, like the meta build, is, is even Telkine's anymore, but generally pretty early game since they changed the um, passive damage to be flat instead of um, based on your power. Uh, better early game because you know you're not this not going to scale into the late game and the actual damage of the passive by late game falls off quite substantially but in the early game it hits hard it has some life steal which is nice so we'll put it a little bit further down for the life steal component but generally pretty damage focused uh, it's just to get that big extra like hit chunks on your autos in the early game as a magical adc uh, so we'll drop it somewhere around like here maybe you can't really see last gasp i'll move it slightly there we go typhon's fang an interesting one so generally this is like if you look at this item you think late game because it has 20% pen uh, it has the passive where like it boosts even more from your life steal so you already want some life steal online uh, the one thing that makes me not place bancrofts like more towards the late game section though is usually people just go bancrofts into typhons immediately and so um generally like sometimes it can be built earlier than you would really think it should be um, in, in builds where you're not just going Bancross Typhons, you know, if you're maybe going something like Soul Gem Typhons or like Soul Gem Spear of the Magus Typhons or something like that, you know, builds that aren't just Bancross Typhons, ones that have lifesteal like sprinkled throughout the build and then you buy Typhons, it's built a bit more late in those kind of builds in like 4th, 5th, maybe even 6th slot. And it having 20% pen now instead of 10% does shift it slightly more towards late game as well. So I suppose we'll drop uh, Typhons somewhere around here. And then in terms of damage to utility, it's mostly damage. But of course, it does boost your healing from lifesteal and gives lifesteal itself. So that's pretty nice as well. And finally, we have Warlock Staff. So basically, this is going to be basically in the same place as um, Book of Thoth. Or in terms of um, early to late game, it's going to be in the same place as Book of Thoth. But it does have a little bit more utility than Book, of course, coming with that health. Um, so... We'll put it like there. And, you know, obviously it's a stacking item. Same reason as Book of Thoth as to why it's early game. You want to get it online as early as possible, get those stacks going. And so, yeah, that's the full magical damage alignment chart. Uh, a major lack of early game utility items. I mean, I suppose, like, you could argue some of these, like, ones that are more towards the middle, you could put them a little bit more early game. But I feel like most mage items generally do skew a little bit late game, other than this cluster here of, like, stacking items and flat pen items and rushes, like, do mob and, um... Talkine's Ring and Bancrofts as well. And yeah, of course, we have a major skew towards damage here. Uh, I said at the start, you know, mages, they're built to deal damage. Uh, most of their items are very damage heavy, but there are a few with uh, some more utility stats like the ones we have down here. But yeah, hopefully this one helped you out uh, in terms of mage builds and stuff like that. Maybe even for some magical ADCs or potentially even a couple of guardian items here like ethereal staff. And yeah, let me know which uh, alignment chart you want to see next. Do you want to see tank items to complete the kind of regular tier 3 items? Or do you want to see starter items next? Because I know starter items is a very interesting one uh, in terms of placements. So yeah, let me know down below and I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.